What's going on guys? Michael Besh from Arc Supply. And today we're going over Topcon's Hyper VR GNSS receiver. We're going to be breaking down some of the highlights, really the most popular models we see out there in the field, and then ultimately some other things you should consider before making a purchase. So jumping right into it, some of the highlights we love is that you have the ability to get up to one millimeter accuracy readings. You could connect to multiple satellites and constellations such as GPS and Galileo. It has a IP67 rating, which means that it can stand harsh job site conditions. And then on top of that, it has the IMU technology built into it. So it also allows you to actually put that receiver on about a 30 degree tilt and still get an accurate reading. So let's jump into now some of the more uh, popular models we see out there in the field. All right, the first setup is your Basin Rover UHF. You have your Basin Rover 915. Then you have your network rovers only, and then you do have base stations only. So let's break down each one of those. The Basin Rover UHF versus 915s. And the general rule of thumb is UHF is meant for surveyors, while 915 is meant for that construction industry, typically, you know, 2D and 3D machine control systems. Um, with UHF, you have a range of about three miles, whereas that 915, you have a range of about one mile. And just a fun fact, too, with the UHF, technically, you're supposed to have a commercial license to, to operate that radio. Um, with the 915 series, you do not. So, you know, when you're going UHF, just make sure you get the right frequency. And then on that 915 Basin Rover setup, it's pretty straightforward for, for the construction guys doing machine control. Now, let's go over the network rovers only. This is if you plan on piggybacking off of an existing network using your cell phone. And this has its advantages because A, it's half the cost. You don't have to worry about someone stealing your, your base station. And on top of that, you can use your cell phone. Now, you know, there are some drawbacks to this, um, which is if you don't have good cell phone reception, this isn't really going to work. And on top of that, you need to check in with your local networks, both your public and private, to see if you can actually tap into them. So, for example, I know in Florida, there's a one-time setup fee with the DOT, um, and then you can use it for life. Uh, New Jersey DOT and New York DOT, they have their own networks as well. But again, you have to do your due diligence beforehand to make sure that you're actually able to tap in. And then on top of that, you're going to have a good cell phone service in the air as you plan on using it. Um, all right, so that is your network rover only. Uh, really cost-effective way to get into it, but again, it has some drawbacks. And then now last one I'd mentioned to you is the base stations only. And this really is when you're doing replacements. Um, you know, whether your one got knocked down and broke or God forbid it got stolen or whatever the case may be. This is when you're really just going for a replacement in your, your, set, your setup. And, you know, we just make sure that you actually have to get the right radio frequencies to communicate with your other, the other equipment. All right. So that is the Hyper VR hardware in a nutshell. And there's one more piece of the puzzle here that you, you need to look into, and it's your software, which we call your OAF files. So if you do not purchase the software, these Hyper VRs are essentially useless. And there's one software that goes with about 90% of these. And I'll put that model up on the screen. This unlocks everything in your, your uh, Hyper VR, except it does not have the IMU technology, which allows you to put that, that rover on a tilt, right? So if you need that tilt, um, the IMU technology, you're going to have to upgrade on this software. So just a little caveat, sometimes we've seen people miss that. So, you know, look, we hope this helps break down a little bit of the Hyper VR series more in a nutshell, but please, any questions, comments, or concerns, give us a buzz at Benchmark, and we'd be happy to get you Benchmark. 